Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Allie, if you're new to my channel, and welcome to Beauty With A Purpose. So if you are new to my channel, my name is Allie. I upload four videos a week, beauty, bible, and lifestyle. So if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. So for today's video, you guys, I just have a chat to get ready with me. Let's talk about why I needed a break. Let's talk about what's been going on in my head, like where I've been, why I've been gone, my thoughts. Just let's let's talk about my life. So yeah. Oh, my stomach is hurting. Another reason I've been gone. That intro was rough, basically forgot it. Let's clip my hair back. So I did a poll on Instagram about like what, I bought some makeup from Ulta and asked you guys what you guys wanted to see in my trying new makeup video. So the things that didn't win that vote are things that I'm gonna be using in this chit chat, get ready with me. So yeah, not gonna talk too much about the products, just gonna talk to you guys and apply some makeup. Okay, so first of all, I don't even think I've been on a, on, I don't think I've recorded since the new year. So I haven't had the chance to tell you guys Happy New Year. How was your guys' New Year? How has your year started off? Is everything okay? How have you guys been? Let me get all of those questions out of the way before I start so selfishly rambling on about my life. But seriously, how was your guys' New Year's? What are some plans that you guys have? Some goals for the New Year? Like, what's been going on, y'all? My skin broke out really nasty a couple weeks ago and it's been clearing up this week and yeah that was a certain foundation that you guys would see in next week's video but it wasn't i figured it was my primers that i just decluttered because they were years and years old so yes, first of all let's talk about oh, so at least once a month i go through a week of no not my period but that too but where i am constipated and this just happens to be that week because with constipation comes gas, with gas comes chest, back, and stomach pain for me. So, gotta love that. So yeah, so I guess I could talk about my New Year's goals. Um, honestly, you guys, like my goal for this year is just to be a better me, like just improve on myself. Like I don't even care about anything materialistically. There's nothing that I wanna do materialistically. like. I learned in December that I have a lot of things that I need to work on for myself and that ties into why I needed to take the break that I took. But yes, I have a lot of things that I need to work on for myself that I just don't like about myself, like my temper, my anger, the way I react to things and that plays a big role when I was gone. So. I guess we can go ahead and get into that now that I really talked about my goals, like just making me a better me. So basically my goal for 2020 is to work on me so that way when my kids look up to me like as a mom and like as someone that they, I don't, I don't want to say that they see themselves marrying me, but whenever they look for char characteristics in a woman, they, I mean, they'll look up to their mom for that. And so I want to make sure that I'm being the best me that I can be. So that way they can have a good example for not only their spiritual life, but for their marriages and like the women that they'll have in their life. And like, I don't know, like for me, it's all about the bigger picture now. And so it's like, I don't, I don't care if they know that mom blew up on YouTube. I don't care if they know that mom, you know, made bukus of money. Like all I really care about is that they know that mom was a good mom and that she was a good wife to my dad and that she took care of the home that the way she was supposed to and she cared for others. And like, that's just really what I want my kids to see in me. So those are the things that I'm working on for 2020. Because all of my kids are getting to the age where they're starting to notice and copy and take heed to a lot of stuff. So really gotta get serious about that. So yeah, there actually is one thing that I want, it's not a goal, but something that I wanna get done in this year is I would love to start the braces process. I am having oral surgery to remove my wisdom teeth. I only have wisdom teeth on the bottom. I never got any in on the top. Those were missing. I only have them on the bottom. So I am going to go in to get those removed. And then Brian and I are going to start 
looking at the process for me to get braces and the cost of things and things like that. So that is super exciting. That is something that I really wanna do for myself that's not like about others, it's about me. Like if that makes sense. Like I don't wanna sound selfish, but I don't know. Like I just hate sounding selfish. Like <laughs> I really do because I'm not a selfish person. I can have selfish tendencies. Like anyways, I can have selfish tendencies, but like I truly do care more about others than myself, if that makes sense. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start with the eyeshadow. And now since we're doing the eyeshadow, we can actually get into a little bit about Okay, so I, where I've been is I've been taking a break and I announced it in my community tab. So if you ever wonder why, like, hey, Ali usually posts on these days or, you know, Ali usually has this many videos on this day, either follow me and you see that I'm not posting, either follow me on Instagram for updates or check the community tab because now that I can post on the community tab, I tried to let you guys know that, you know, like I just needed a break. There were some things that I had to take care of. Okay, so when i decided to take the break i had been feeling it before i actually took it so the week that i decided to take the break i had actually posted two videos or three videos was it two or three videos i posted two or three videos for that week and then i was like you know what i really need a break i even have two vlogs that i was like i just I can't right now. And so that vlog footage is scrapped and we will start vlogging again next week. Whoa, the week that you're watching this is whenever I will start vlogging again. So the week that you're watching this video, there will actually only be three videos because I wanna go ahead and switch my vlogs to being posted on Mondays. Either Mondays or Saturdays, we'll see how I feel because I really want them to be more accurate of like when the week happens. So I don't want you guys to watch like one week's vlog on the next week's Friday. Like I'd rather you watch it either that Saturday or Monday. And that's just what I wanna do for my channel. Starting this year is like, just have my vlogs be on a more accurate timeline. But I needed the break because I'm not one, and I'm not gonna tell y'all what like happened in detail, but Brian and I got into a, dis a disagreement, um, an argument, if you will. Um, we like to call them disagreements, but it, brought up a lot out of me that I realized was wrong with me and I felt it had me thinking thoughts and I acted in certain ways that I just didn't feel like for me to call myself a woman of God and to me and for me to give people advice on how to be a godly woman and for me to want to be that Proverbs 31 wife like in that moment of that argument I felt I was none of those things and I was so ashamed of myself when I kept, the enemy started planting seeds in my head, like how dare you go and even start uploading videos after you've just seen the type of person that you are. And it's crazy, like we all have a flesh, we all have our weaknesses, and mine is allowing the enemy to tell me that I'm less than I am, which is not true. Like, yes, I had a moment of weakness. Yes, I gave into the temptation of being angry and causing an argument but that's not who I am and I can do better. And I repented of it and I had been praying on it, but guys, it it was really eating me alive. And like, even today, as I sit here and film this video, like I'm still feeling ashamed. I'm still feeling like I'm not worthy to get in front of the camera and talk to you guys about the things of God. But I know that that's exactly what the enemy wants. But at the same time, God wants me to show you guys that everybody falls, everybody has weaknesses. Like nobody who shares the word of God is a perfect person. And everybody at some point gives into the temptations of sin, whether it be anger, adultery homo like homosexuality lust a, like everybody at some point gives into a sin mine happens to be anger and allowing that anger to speak death and I don't mean an actual literal death but to somebody's feelings to somebody's character to somebody's spirit like I don't know and so anyways I was feeling very unworthy and it was starting to send me into a depression and I know that because you guys, like I said, I haven't been wanting to leave my house. I stay home and like I'm with the boys and like I hang out with them and I play with them because I don't want them to know that mommy's feeling like this. I don't want them to know that mommy's going through this. So, you know, they're gonna see mommy play with them. They're gonna see mommy be strong. But for you guys, like I don't, oh my gosh, of course. Okay, so yeah, I was falling into a depression and 
Like I said, I never like to claim that on myself. And for a long time, I was in denial that Christians don't get depression. Christian Christians shouldn't be depressed, but that's a spirit. Like that's an attack from the enemy. So who am I and how like to not be attacked by that same spirit to get me out of place of going out and sharing the gospel of I uh, of God of I of God. Like who am I that I'm just untouchable by tests and trials and spirits that want to pull me out of my walk with God. And so I had to just take a step back, acknowledge that this was what it was. And I battled it for weeks, you guys, like for like three weeks, I went through it alone until I finally opened up to Brian. And, you know, I just told him, like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't want to call it depression, but I feel like that's what it is. Like at some points in the day, like I can be really happy and like, I'm fine. And then it's just like nothing in particular happens. Nothing comes against me, but all of a sudden like I just feel numb like not sad not mad not happy like just numb to everything that's going on around me like nothing can make me cry nothing can make me laugh nothing can make me smile it was just a numb feeling and I don't know if like you guys have ever gone through that I don't know let me know but it wasn't until I opened up to Brian and he, because the reason I don't open up is because, is because the community I have built around me is either people that I want to bring into the body of Christ or it's people that I have built around me as my accountability partners in the body of Christ. So it's either people that I want to bring in or people that are already in that I have that hold me accountable. And so for one, I don't want to go to the people that I'm trying to bring into Christ because I don't want to scare them away like, hey, she's going through this. So why? So what's the point of walking away from my sin if I still face that? So I don't want to go to people who I want to come in. But at the same time, like I don't want to go to people who are in Christ because they're just going to be like, because they're just going to tell like, oh, well, pray about it. You know the word of God. And it's like, I get that. Like, I get it. I get that. I know the word of God. And I know how to battle these thoughts. And I know the scriptures to battle these thoughts. And I'm doing it. I am trying. But I'm here to tell you, the spirit has a stronghold right on me right now. And it's hard to fight off. It's not letting go. And so I just, it, I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. I don't want the people who I want to follow God with me to get scared away from following God. And I don't, but I also need people to understand like, yes, I know the word, but I'm telling you, I've been doing this and it is hard. And so I needed somebody there to understand that, you know, because like, I admit I've been that friend, like, oh, you're going through depression, here's some scripture. But sometimes like, and I've learned going through this, some people just need somebody to talk to and get it off their chest and somebody to understand like, you know what, like, it's okay that you're going through this. It's okay that you feel like this. And I felt like at the time the enemy placed in my head, like I didn't have anybody there. I didn't have anybody to talk to. And so I felt alone, like lonely and numb is the best way to, f I felt lonely and I felt numb. And so finally on Wednesday, I had a breakdown in my worship and praying and crying. And then Wednesday night, I talked to Brian about it and he told me like, you know, babe, like it's okay. Like I go through those feelings at times like that. Like I can look around and I can see that I've had everything that I've prayed for and more but there's just something in me that won't allow me to feel the joy. There's something in me that won't even allow me to appreciate it. And it's not like I'm mad or I'm upset for being here, but it's just a numb feeling. Like I, it's so weird to explain, but guys, I've been sleeping so much like this past week and I, I needed that breakthrough. I needed that breakthrough in my worship time because it's just like, I don't know. I was so ashamed of myself, guys. So th anyways, that's why I needed the break. And that's what I've been going through on my break. But I needed to share with you guys because, you know, I have to realize, like, even though I have this platform, it's best if I share with you guys that, hey, I'm not perfect all the time. I battle depression just like you. I battle anxiety just like you, for instance. <laughs> Another thing that added on to that is I was having this, I was starting to have separation anxiety from Bryson because... Ethan, Ethan, not so much because obviously Ethan is not Brian's son. So I've dealt with Ethan going to stay with his dad. When Ethan was first born, he had to be in daycare because I was a single mom and I had to go to work and his dad, you know, didn't have the means to watch him during the day. So I had that with Ethan, but Bryson, like I've been with him since birth. Like we've never been like apart for a certain amount of time and things like that. 
So he's really, Bryson is really close to Brian's grandma, like really, really close to Brian's grandma. And so um, where his grandma used to live is actually literally right across the street from Ethan's school. So we're driving across past there and Ethan said, you know, mom, where's Gigi? I wanna go with Gigi. I told him, I said, you know, baby, Gigi don't live here anymore. She moved to New Mexico and he got really upset. So I talked to Brian and I was like, you know, what do you think about us? And it was my idea. I was like, what do you think about us sending Bryson to New Mexico with your grandmother for about a week or however long he wants to stay and she wants to keep him? I was like, you know, he really misses her. And, you know, I don't want him to be deprived from that relationship because nobody's promised tomorrow. You know what I mean? And so she said yes. And, you know, like she's excited to have him. And I was thinking like, oh, man, like that's so awesome. You know, I can get a little break. It'll just be king here during the day with me. Ethan will be at school or Ethan will be with his dad. And I was just like, but then it hit me like <laughs> Bryson's going to be away from me. And then I was just like. Bryson starts school in August. Like I just started like, I don't know. Like it makes me want to cry now. Like, I don't know. Like it's so weird because I always tell people like, boy, like Bryson has been, I don't want to call him my problem child, but he's definitely been the child that like, it's been a battle. Like it's been a battle with him, like his obedience and like him, like he, he cries so much. And if you know me, I don't like crybabies. Like, I know it sounds me, but I don't. Bryson is a crybaby. And I really had to learn my patience with that. But like, even though all of those things like bothered me and like, I was like, oh, such a break. Like, you know, like a break that I need as a mom. And it's okay to need breaks as a mom. Don't let people make you feel like you're a terrible mother just because you need a break. But yeah, so I started getting separation anxiety on top of just that numb feeling to the world that I was feeling. And it was just like, ugh. And then like I needed a break and I guess because I was going through, uh, I hate calling it depression because I never want to speak that spirit on myself. But I guess while I was going through that, like YouTube just started to feel like an obligation rather than a hobby. And I never wanted it to get to that point. Like even though I want YouTube to be something bigger where I can make some kind of money off of it, I never wanted it, like I just wanted it to be a hobby that also brought in some income, you know? And it was just only starting to be like a job and a job to the point where then I felt like if I wanted to read my Bible for a Jesus chat, then it was only for a job, not because I wanted to know the things of God. And I was like, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be to where everything feels like I have to do it. I always want everything to be in my life to be like, oh, because I wanna do it. You know what I mean? like. Man. So yeah, you guys, it's just been like a little uphill battle and it's been hard and that's why I needed the break. And I have to realize, you know, like, I still feel ashamed. I still feel unworthy because of, for going against God, but I've repented and I have to forgive myself. And I can't let, allow myself to dwell there and allow it to identify me because God needs me to go out and do what he's called me to do. And I won't allow that spirit to continue to latch itself in a way to me to where it, pre it prevents me from doing what God has called me to do. But I mean, you see guys, I needed time. So if you ever need time, if you're ever going through something like that, like I took the time to figure out what it was. I took the time to find help. I took the time to rest not restore myself, but allow God to restore me. So if you need to take the time, take the time. Okay, now that lashes are on, get into foundation, taking it back to one of my favorite foundation combos. Let's see if I still like it. And I put a lot of foundation on the back of my hand. And I mean a lot. Might be a little bit too dark for me. I didn't do a good job mixing that. It's because I thought I put a lot of the lighter one. Or maybe the lighter one's actually my correct shade now. Yes, Allie, get all the foundation in your edges. Love that. So yeah, what have you guys been up to for the new year? I really hope you guys have not been having to go through what I've been going through. One thing I did notice though is like everybody goes through depression differently. Like I definitely noticed like things would stay out of their place longer in my house. Like my house wouldn't become like a huge disaster, but I would definitely allow things to be out of place longer or to be not a mess. Cause I don't ever think my house is a mess from what people tell me. 
yeah definitely things were staying out of place longer i was being like very passive with the boys like just letting them kind of get away with a lot and kind of helped me with my parenting though like i would get on to them but like it was very very calm and like they would listen and so i learned like hey you don't have to go full psycho mode to get your kids to listen to you. Like, they actually want to listen to you right now. So, yeah. Um, weight update. I am actually down. As of this morning, I am down 24 pounds, you guys. 24 freaking pounds. Like, I'm almost down to my halfway point. My halfway point, or my goal is to lose 50 pounds so I could be at 200 pounds. And I'm almost halfway there, like halfway to losing 50 pounds. Definitely want to completely be down to like 180. I felt like that just disappeared, right? Didn't that just disappear off my cheek? It's so crazy how like cream products are like becoming like so popular again because I feel like I've seen like in older movies and things like that and things that like I've read and stuff, like makeup used to only be basically like cream products. Like you didn't really have the powders. Your lipstick was a cream, your blush was a cream, like so crazy, like how things always make their way back around to being popular. I'm actually having oral surgery on Monday on the 25th. I need to call my grandma today, today's her birthday. But on Monday the 25th, I'm having that oral surgery I was telling you guys about. Cause I have to get those wisdom teeth out before I can even um, start the process for braces. I have to get those wisdom teeth out. So insurance covered it, but not a lot. I still have to pay 500 bucks to get them out. I'm like, man, that would have been a thousand bucks if I still had my top two, was if I had top two wisdom teeth. So very thankful that I was not born with top wisdom teeth. Well, this powder, never comes out to this extent like this. And now that I'm filming with it, it's like everywhere, like everywhere. So yeah, I'm excited for it, but kind of dreading it because I hear that tooth pain is like the worst pain. And I ha used to have tooth pain, like with every pregnancy, I've had really bad tooth pain. Like I don't, I don't wanna voluntarily go through it, but I won't be able to eat solids for a week or two weeks. I don't know, maybe it will tell me again when I get there, but I'm pretty sure it's two weeks. One to two weeks, I won't be able to eat any solid foods, only liquids and like mushy foods. It's kind of a bummer because even now, cause I've already had the consultation for getting braces, so I already know I'm getting my wisdom teeth out now, but once I start the process of my braces, I'm gonna have to get more teeth pulled out. I wanted to say, I know this isn't in Jesus chats and I really don't talk too much about I mean, I do bring up God in my beauty videos, but not as much, like, because that's what my Jesus chat series is for. But I wanted to talk about salvation a little bit. Um, I really feel like if there was ever a time that you were curious about what it means to be saved, like, now is the time to seek that out. Like, truly, wholeheartedly seek that out. Um, I notice because, like, if you really, I don't know, let me, let me just do say this. A lot of people look at being saved as like, oh, I gotta read the Bible. First of all, you get to read the Bible because there's a lot of countries who don't get to and are being persecuted for reading it. Um, you know, I gotta give up this, I gotta give up that. And like, it's like, it's not gonna happen immediately. For a long time, I still got drunk. For a little while after I found God, I would still smoke weed. Like, and it's not like people would tell me or condemn me, but God just started to change my heart towards these towards these things so it's like when you think of salvation people are like oh it brings freedom it brings you are saved from having to do those things and it's like yeah i am saved i'm saved from sin i'm saved from depression i'm saved from anxiety but ultimately the phrase saved truly means that you are saved from the wrath of god and so to live a saved life in the salvation that god gives us means that you are saved from the wrath of, wrath of god which is to come now, why do I, why do I say that? Because I've had people ask me, hey, you know, like, what makes you so passionate about the Bible and Christ? Like, why are you so passionate about it? Like, why, I, you know, I just don't see how you could serve a God that gets mad at you 
for not serving him, but you'd rather serve, like, like you'd rather worship something else. And it's like I told the person, well, when you look into other religions, they're all a spin off the Bible. The Bible even speaks of these other religions and what they require. They require human sacrifices. They require you to be accountable. They require you of all these things. I'm not gonna name any specific religions. Just a lot of, a lot of these other religions require this once you get deep into it. Because for one, if God is a God of life, he will not, he cannot be a God of death. So no human sacrifices. Um, even whenever it was in the Old Testament and before Christ came and died for all of our sins, not once did he ever require human sacrifice. Now he does ask, he does ask um, Abraham, hey, go sacrifice your son that I promised you. And Abraham is good and willing, but even then, God provided a ram, an animal to be sacrificed. And for one, he asked him to sacrifice his son to see where his loyalty stood and his trust. But I don't know. So there's these religion, basically what I'm trying to say is these religions require a lot out of you that is evil. Whereas God doesn't require anything out of you that is evil or goes against morals. Like he just doesn't. And not only that, but I feel like this question was asked due to the fact that we will one day see the wrath of God. So if you had to sit in, if you had a front row seat to all the evil that goes on in the world, like you had to be a part of this every single day. You had to see every single murder, every single child get molested or raped, every woman get raped, every man get raped. You had to sit there and experience all of that. can't tell me you wouldn't want to bring punishment upon the people who just didn't want to change their ways uh, among that that's who the wrath of god is for for those who are so wicked so evil and so vile that's what the wrath of god is for now the word of god does say i am the way the truth and the life no one can go to the father except through me so yes we do have to accept and confess with our mouth that jesus christ is our lord and savior because god sent him for our salvation to be saved from his wrath at the end of times. Not sure if any of that made sense because I feel like I took a lot of breaks and kind of lost where I was. <laughs> but that's what the wrath of God is for. It's for evil people and he yeah. provided a way out. So you can't say God is the terrible God. Oh, he wants to destroy us. When he provided a way out of being destroyed, you it's just up to you to accept that or not. I feel like that lash is ugly. I don't think I like these lashes. I don't think I like this eye look. I don't think I look cute today. Maybe it's the hair, I don't know. So anyways, yeah. Um, I saw this video on TikTok and somebody was like, you know, God just created us. We didn't ask to be created. So therefore, why should I then serve him? And then the guy who was teaching was like, okay, I have another scenario for you. You're upset, your family decides to go boating. You get on the boat, even though you don't wanna be there, the boat starts to sink. But there comes another boat to save you guys. Are you just gonna sit there on the boat that's sinking because you didn't wanna be there? Or are you gonna take the help, which is Christ? You know, and I just love that. I feel like we are in a time like when Noah, so when Noah was told to build the ark, he was mocked because the world had never seen rain at this point. So the world's like, ha, you believe in your God so much that there's gonna be a flood and we've never even experienced waters like this. We've never even experienced rain. So they're mocking him. But it took Noah hundreds of years to build this ark. So that was hundreds of years that people could have stopped mocking him and got on to the ark with him and believed him, but they didn't. The door was open all that time. The door was open all that time. The door is open now for salvation. The door is open now for you to answer the call of God on your life to be saved just simply by accepting Christ into your heart and allowing him to work in you. That's all it takes is you saying, okay, I've accepted Christ into my heart. This is what it is. This is how I feel. He truly is great. He truly is amazing. And you know what? Now that I see how good God is and what Christ has done for me, oh, I think I should stop doing this. I think, and like I said, it didn't happen overnight for me. There was still a lot of stuff I was doing that I had no business doing trying to follow God when I first found him. 
So it, it's, it's not an overnight process. It's not an instantaneous change, but it starts with you saying yes to Christ. It starts with you saying, yes, God, come into my heart. I accept you into my heart. I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. And from that point on, just from that, you will start to experience his goodness. And then when you experience his goodness, it makes you want to be good. And then it makes you want to show others how good he is. And it's just a ripple effect. But it literally only starts with you saying yes to Christ and then allowing him to have his way in you. And you get into the word for yourself. You read the word. You ask him to help you understand his word because somebody can sit down and read the Bible and have no spiritual understanding and it will make no sense to them. I was recently in this place while I was going through my depression, I was sitting down to read, to read the Bible and I'm like, oh yeah, like this feels good. But the more I prayed at myself out of it in the after, especially after I talked to Brian about it, like when I read the Bible, I understood like the veil, the veil was removed from my spiritual eyes and I was able to understand. But like I said, you guys, it, it, it really is that simple. It really is as simple as even right now, if you're watching this video and you say, okay, Lord, I believe that you sent Christ as the ultimate sacrifice and I believe that he is my Lord and Savior and by his name I can be redeemed. I repent of all of my sins and I ask Lord that you create a new heart in me to seek after you. Amen. And from that point on you allow him to change you. You find a Bible study group to go to. If you don't like churches, find you just gotta find fellowship community. I'm not saying you have to go to church but it is good to have a community around you, even if it is online, via online, just people to hold you accountable that you can build that bond with. But it really is as simple as just saying, okay, Lord, like I accept you into my heart and I'm ready for you to change me because I'm really not a good person when I really look at who I am. And so not saying you're terrible, not saying you're a murderer or anything like that. But I know for me, for instance, the point of anger that I can get to makes me not a good person when I get to that point or hurting people or just things like that like yeah anyways it's very confusing maybe i'll do a more in-depth video on it but i mean i just want to encourage you guys to say yes to god today and accept christ as your lord and savior and just allow him to have his way in you because that's the ultimate salvation that's the only way to avoid the wrath of god because wrath of god was never meant for us it was meant for satan and his fallen and the fallen angels that fell with him um we just decided to partake in the things that satan wanted us to partake in and he wants us there with him but you can tell satan no and tell god yes and dwell with god for all of eternity so yeah you guys it felt good to get back in front of the mirror like i said i just i don't know i feel like i look weird i don't know if it's because i'm not used to filming like it's literally been over like almost a month since i filmed um, again, Happy New Year. Let me know what you guys um, think of this look, some of your guys' New Year's plans. Always remember that I love you guys, but Jesus loves you more. If you haven't already, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.